Today we're going to talk about hair loss, more specifically hair shedding. It's a very large topic, hair loss, with the most common being male pattern baldness or androgenic alopecia. So that's a very, very large subject to cover. We're going to narrow that subject down into hair loss, specifically talking about hair shedding. And then with hair shedding, we're going to break it down to two types, which are telogen effluvium and antigen effluvium. Briefly, when you're looking at hair shedding, it's something that's a little bit different to make that distinction from male pattern baldness. Because in male pattern baldness, even though you will have some hair loss and some hair shedding, it's not the active hair shedding that you usually are encountered in you know, certain conditions like telogen effluvium or antigen effluvium. Really what happens in male pattern baldness is there's a conversion to smaller hairs called vellus hairs, and there's also uh, a higher, per actually it's not a higher percentage of, of hairs going into telogen, but there's a shorter antigen phase, so there's a disproportionate number of telogen hairs in androgenetic or male pattern baldness. But hair shedding, even though it can be part of Male pattern baldness is not necessarily one of the defining attributes of it or a major component of it. So hair shedding is something that can cause a lot of disturbance to someone and make them feel very uh, concerned that they may go to baldness or what, what's going on is there an underlying problem. And what's happening in hair shedding is either one of two major conditions, telogen effluvium or antigen effluvium. It's has something going on with one of those two phases. Now, obviously, other conditions that are uh, not uncommon, like alopecia areata, could have caused focal loss of hair in certain areas uh, where there will be shedding in those zones. There could be things that you need to make sure the patient is not shedding, but they're actually pulling their hairs out, like in trichotillomania. But we're going to focus on two types of hair shedding, um, which are telogen effluvium and antigen effluvium. Let's first talk about telogen effluvium. Telogen effluvium is probably the much, much more commonly encountered, and it's something that you need to uh, think about. First of all, before we talk about telogen effluvium, let's define what antigen, catagen, and telogen are so you understand more specifically when we talk about telogen effluvium what we're talking about. Most hair is in a growth phase. You know, if you think about your skin, it's constantly growing, your hair is constantly growing, and about 90% of hairs are in an antigen phase or growth phase. And 10% are, excuse me, 10% are in telogen, and the phase between the two called catagen is about 1% in normal human scalps. It's a time when the hair is in a quiescent state before it actually begins to get shed during telogen, and telogen is a very unique phase of, of hair, uh, of the hair, it's just about to fall out, and there is a component of telogen where the hair is actually falling out called exogen. So telogen uh, effluvium is when those telogen hairs, those, uh, those hairs that are, that are not growing anymore, fall out, and there are things that cause telogen, uh, to, uh, telogen effluvium. So telogen is a normal process of, of, of hair loss, but uh, excuse me, of, of just the hair cycle, but the reason you don't really notice a lot of hair shedding is that we're asynchronously in antigen and telogen. We're not all in telogen or all in antigen, otherwise you'd be like some animals that shed, you know, where their, their telogen is more synchronous than, than, in, than human beings. Um, and there are certain times of, of the year where there's more synchrony in telogen or a higher proportion of telogen, but essentially it's 10%. So when you're seeing a lot of active hair shedding, it could be synchronous telogen hair loss, or it could be you just have a, a, a higher proportion of telogen hairs or hairs going into telogen. So what are some of the most common college, co causes of telogen effluvium? Um, several things. One would be fever. If you had a fever in the past, something could actually trigger a telogen loss. And that usually occurs, in most cases with telogen effluvium, about three to four months after an inciting cause. The reason fevers may cause it is there's a thought that the interferon alpha in there can actually incite hair loss. So if you have a fever about three to four months beforehand, that could cause a telogen loss. In addition to that, um, things like postpartum, immediately after childbirth, you could have a telogen effluvium. And the reason for that is most of the hairs are held in a prolonged state of antigen from the, from the higher estrogen state through the placental growth hormone. And after delivery, all these synchronized antigen phases are lost and you start shedding into telogen. It usually is more severe in your first pregnancy. It occurs about four to 12 weeks afterwards. It, all this can be stabilized with minoxidil, which interestingly enough, minoxidil itself can also cause a telogen because what happens is that the hairs are pushed into antigen phase. And so the hairs are then shed a little bit more quickly before it gets into antigen. And then so you may have a little shedding even with, with minoxidil in the first month of use. So postpartum state can cause uh, telogen effluvium as well. 
Uh, we talked about fever. Certain drugs can cause it, such as oral contraceptives, uh, anticoagulants, like Coumadin and heparin. Now, the reason I want to talk about oral contraceptives is that it's probably one of the most common causes of telogen effluvium. And it's, it's oftentimes similar to the reason for postpartum is that when you're on when you're on oral contraceptives, you're in a prolonged state of high estrogen. Once you stop oral contraceptives, you can have some telogen effluvium or hair loss because you've entered a stage where there's a little lower levels of estrogen, and that can be another reason for telogen effluvium. Uh, prolonged anesthesia, uh, you know, the, just the, tr the traumatic uh, episode of having a, a surgical procedure of almost any duration, but the longer the anesthesia, the higher likelihood that you could have uh, a telogen effluvium as well. Well, that usually again occurs about three to four months after the uh, procedure, not immediately afterwards. Um, other causes are low thyroids, uh, low thyroid condition, a low iron level can cause it. Um, uh, crash dieting, and usually it's more specifically linked to the problem with having uh, a low protein during your crash diet that could cause uh, uh, hair shedding. In each of these conditions, uh, besides finding the cause of it, you also want to be treating it minoxidil or Rogaine topically to the scalp can be a very effective treatment uh, with the caveat again of maybe some early telogen shedding as the hair cycle into antigen more quickly. Um, other causes of telogen uh, would be include malignancy, uh, low, uh, uh, a kidney dysfunction, some systemic disease or malabsorption with the, with, the, with the GI tract can also cause telogen effluvium. Those are probably the big categories, and, and on my website there's a huge list of also medications that have a very low incidence of reported telogen effluvium, but that's another, another, another cause as well. Finally, I want to talk about, before we got, talk about antigen effluvium, a subset of telogen effluvium called chronic telogen effluvium. This is a condition that occurs uh, typically in women between the ages of 30 to 60. And this is just, uh, they can't find out the cause. There's no cause that they can link it to. They've checked the, you know, all the different types of uh, hormone levels. And they found that the reason for the, uh, excuse me, they couldn't find out the reason for the telogen. But over a period of time, there's this constant shedding that occurs over a period of many, many years. But the key is, one is to reassure a woman that she's not going to go to full baldness, even though there may be periodic times of hair shedding. In addition to that, um, they found that actually topping off ferritin levels, which are the iron levels, up to the male reference range instead of just a female reference range can be very effective. And also using 5% uh, minoxidil, the male, do male uh, dose for, for uh, treating this can be effective so long as you don't get secondary side effects of, of hair growth in women. Let's talk about antigen effluvium because it's something that it's a whole whole different uh, uh, subject about of, of hair shedding, um, and what happens here is if someone's taking a cytotoxic agent like a chemotherapy for cancer things like that, you see them have a diffuse hair loss. That is an antigen effluvium. So what is the difference? Well, it's affecting that growth phase, that antigen growth phase. And remember that 90% of hairs in general are in antigen phase, so that when there's an antigen effluvium, there's a tremendous amount of hair loss that you see uh, with a chemotherapy agent. Now, what is that, what is, what's happening, OK? Is it just, remember that telogen is not affected because it's in a, in a quiet state. It's not doing anything. But the hairs are actively growing are the ones affected because just like the, the cancer that it's affecting, the cancer is in a rapidly multiplying state and the hairs are in a rapidly multiplying state. So as the antigen, as the hair grows out, the matrix cells, if you look at my hair anatomy section of this website, I'll explain what that is. But those are the, some of the, 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 the cells that are, are growing the hair out are not growing correctly and you get little breaks. And so you can see in the scalp besides diffuse hair loss, also little abnormal breaks that occur uh, in, the, um, in the scalp as well because of the fragility when the hair is breaking off during uh, poor, the antigens being affected. And uh, that is different in terms of the time interval. Usually occurs about uh, two to six weeks after the cytotoxic drug is, is instituted or started. And that's different from telogen, which occurs about three to four months after, or telogen effluvium occurs about three to four months after the inciting uh, uh, problems such as fever, postpartum period, et cetera, and things like that. Um, in terms of antigen effluvium, in most cases after the, the cessation or stop of the medication or cytotoxic uh, pro, uh, medication, you actually get your hair back because the antigen goes back into a normal growth phase. Um, hopefully that was a good summary of hair shedding in terms of just thinking about 
teleogen effluvium and anagen effluvium. There's obviously other types of hair shedding that can occur, such as alopecia areata, and also uh, what we call scarring or cicatricial alopecia, but it lies beyond the scope of this brief video.